China is witnessing internal turmoil, with citizens protesting against COVID lockdowns and even calling for Xi to step down. But an external situation is also brewing, which the communist government cannot ignore. Canada referred to China as disruptive in its official 2022 Indo-Pacific strategy document. Relations between the Canadian and Chinese governments have deteriorated significantly in recent years, particularly during the tenure of Chinese Communist Party CCP, General Secretary Xi Jinping. But this is the first time a real pushback seems to be taking shape. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how Canada has woken up to threats from China under CCP. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder, the most comprehensive military vehicle online game for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, in which you can go to battle on more than 1,200 playable aircraft, tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s. The game has an amazing attention to detail and focuses on a realistic combat experience, which is why knowing your vehicles and skill really makes a difference. It's easy to get into and all you need to play is nothing more but your mouse and keyboard or controller. Immerse yourself in cross-platform combat with more than 20 million other military vehicle enthusiasts from all over the world. Download and play War Thunder for free using the link in the description below and also get a free bonus tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account. The Indo-Pacific Strategy Document has a section dedicated to China and it reads as follows. Canada's evolving approach to China is a critical part of the Indo-Pacific strategy. China is an increasingly disruptive global power. Key regional actors have complex and deeply intertwined relationships with China. Canada's Indo-Pacific strategy is informed by its clear-eyed understanding of this global China and Canada's approach is aligned with those of our partners in the region and around the world. China's rise, enabled by the same international rules and norms that it now increasingly disregards, has had an enormous impact on the Indo-Pacific and it has ambitions to become the leading power in the region. China's making large-scale investments to establish its economic influence, diplomatic impact, offensive military capabilities, and advanced technologies. China is looking to shape the international order into a more permissive environment for interests and values that increasingly depart from ours. This can be seen in China's disregard for UN rulings on disputes in the South China Sea, and its actions to further militarize that region and challenge navigation and overflight rights. Canada has experienced, like others, the impact of coercive diplomacy and non-market trade practices, such as forced labor. The global community continues to see the effects of lending practices that diverge from international standards and create risks for developing economies and their governance. We see China's increasing reluctance to comply with the mandates of UN institutions such as its efforts to block the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights report on the situation of Uyghurs in Xinjiang, China from consideration by the UN Human Rights Council. Canada has been compelled to adjust warnings to Canadians traveling to China as well as to the business community to account for the growing risk of arbitrary application of Chinese laws. In short, behaviors and policies that erode the existing rules-based international order undermine Canadian interests, whether they come from countries that are big or small, but they're especially challenging when pursued by rising powers with divergent national values. It's evident from the outlook that Canada is the latest country to understand the dangers China is posing. While Canada-China relations have gone downhill steadily, a few recent events have soured them even more. One, Chinese leader Xi Jinping gave Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, what can be called a public scolding 
during Group of 20 meeting in Bali. She chided Trudeau, accusing him of leaking details of a brief conversation they had the previous day. She says, speaking through a translator, everything we discussed has been leaked to the paper. That's not appropriate. She went on to say that sincerity is needed for fruitful discussion. He seemingly warned, otherwise the outcome will be hard to say. But before his words can be fully translated, Mr. Trudeau responds, in Canada, we believe in free and open and frank dialogue, and further added, we will continue to look to work constructively together, but there will be things we will disagree on. 2. Canada has summoned Beijing's ambassador following reports of a network of illegal Chinese police stations in the country after warnings that Ottawa is prepared to take more action if China refuses to cease and desist from its alleged activities. Speaking to the Canada-China Committee, Weldon Epp, Director General of North Asia for Canada's Foreign Ministry, said he knew of several engagements by the federal government with China, including repeatedly summoning the ambassador, Kong Pi Wu. 3. The Canadian government leveled accusations against China for conducting numerous dangerous interceptions of a Royal Canadian Air Force. RCAF patrol plane flying surveillance sorties from Japan as part of Operation Neon. Operation Neon is Canada's contribution to a coordinated multinational effort to support the implementation of United Nations Security Council sanctions imposed against North Korea. Importantly, this is not the first time. In June, the Canadian government revealed that since December 2021, the Chinese fighter jets had intercepted a Canadian aircraft flying as part of a UN mission about 60 times. Of these, almost 20 interceptions were labeled as dangerous. As the Chinese aircraft flew only 20 to 100 feet from the Canadian aircraft. Canada's strategy has come as a surprise to many since it's put its views pretty bluntly. But to keen observers, this might not be very shocking. The writing's on the wall. In October, in a speech at the Brookings Institution, Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland described China as coercive and decried the strategic folly of economic reliance on countries that do not share our moral values, proposing supply chain built on friend-shoring. Innovation Minister Francois-Philippe Champagne ordered the divestiture of Chinese ownership of three rare-earth mining companies. Xi Jinping promised early in his tenure that China would work with regional players for a stable Asia-Pacific. But the communist regime's hegemonic intentions are now in the open, and as suspected by many analysts, its rise is not turning out to be peaceful. Canada seems to have seen through Chinese designs and called a spade a spade and its Indo-Pacific strategy. This might be the beginning of slow but steady decoupling from China and potentially signal the start of harder measures. It's to be noted that Canada is part of the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance that also comprises Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States, all of whom are turning against China. Subscribe for more videos like this, hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.